Hello, fifth grade. Today I'm gonna to take some time to go over the unit four independent review of skills. This is the review for unit four that you did yesterday by yourself. And I want to go through it to make sure that you understand which ones that you missed so that you can fix those issues before we get to the test. So I'm gonna work through this. You can look back at your one from yesterday to see which ones you missed or which ones you really need to focus on as you watch this video. Also, I'm going to attach the unit for whole class test review, which we are going to be doing today in math class. That way, if you are at home, you can work through that as one additional practice to make sure that you're ready for the test. You have to be ready to take your unit four assessment when you return back to school. That is what I'm going to require of you. As soon as you return, you will take your unit four assessment. That way you don't fall farther behind in math. So. As I'm going through this, you might look back at how you did yesterday. You might want to pause and work a few out and then press play. You might want to rewatch a couple parts if that's still confusing for you. Remember, this is a video. You can do with it whatever you need to to make sure that you understand. Then after you watch this video, I would go do the whole class test review so that you can practice those things that you had a lot of trouble with. For instance, as I was looking through yesterday's reviews, I noticed that numbers three and four were a big struggle for us. We had forgotten about powers of 10 a little bit. So after you watch number three and four on this video and you better understand it and refresh your memory, you'll want to go to numbers three and four on the whole class test review that we'll be doing in class today to practice those on your own to make sure that you understand so that you're ready for your test. So remember, this is a video, do with it what you need to. Pause, play, rewatch, just make sure you get in that practice and you understand each of these things with decimals and multiplying so that you're ready for your unit four assessment. Let's go ahead and jump right in with these. Number one, Farmer Sylvester feeds his horses 480 pounds of food each month. How many pounds of food does he feed his horses in a year? Okay, so he feeds 480 pounds each month and they want to know in a year. Well, I have to know how many months are in a year? 12. So I'm gonna multiply 480 times 12. I'm gonna do this multiplication pretty quick because we should know how to multiply. It shouldn't be too big of a deal. Not forgetting my X's and O's as I go through here and then I'm going to add them up. I'm gonna do so over here because I kind of ran out of room there. Okay, 5,760, and I'm not forgetting that my label, or my word problems need a label right here, and it would be pounds. In a year, he feeds 5,760 pounds of food to his horses. Number two, Alana's cat had four kittens. If each kitten weighed 3.5 ounces when it was born, how much did the kittens weigh all together? Okay, well each one weighed 3.5 and there was four of them, so I'm going to multiply that. Notice I stacked that up so that the smaller number was on the bottom because that will make it easier. Go ahead and multiply out. Remember, I'm gonna do this pretty quick. Then I noticed this problem has a decimal. My other one did not, but this one does. So I need to count the numbers behind the decimal. There's just one. This one does not have a decimal. So my decimal would go right here. 14.0, looking for that label. It's talking about the weight of the kitten. So that would have to be ounces. Alrighty, moving on down. It says rewrite the following expression using powers of 10 and solve. All right, so number three, I have four times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Well, first I'm gonna write down the four because it's by itself times, and instead of writing all these tens out, they want me to turn it into a power of 10. So I'm gonna put a big 10 because they're all tens, and then my exponent is going to be how many there are, which is four. So I wrote down the four, I counted how many tens there were, and I put it as a power of 10, four times 10 to the fourth. That's what that means to put it as a power of 10. Then I'm going to solve. Remember, this number does not have a decimal. It's just a normal number. And when I'm doing a normal number and a powers of 10, I just write down my normal number. 
and then this exponent tells me how many zeros I should add behind it. So I wrote down my four because that's what I'm multiplying by. And then I look at my exponent, I need four zeros. One, two, three, four, and I'll put my comma where it needs to go, 40,000. All right, let's scooch on down to number four. First, we need powers of 10. It says 11.6 times 10 times 10 times 10. So first, we're multiplying 11.6 times 10, and then I'm gonna count up how many tens I have. I have three of them, so my exponent would be a small three. Now, this number does have a decimal, so when I go to solve, it's a little bit different, remember? When I have a decimal, I still look at my exponent, but instead of just adding on those zeros, I move my decimal that many spots backwards, remember? So I have 11.6. I need to move it three spots. One, two, three. Now I have some empty loops there. Remember, I fill those in with zeros. So it would be 11, six, zero, zero point, And I'll add one more zero back there. So whenever I have decimals with an exponent, the exponent tells me how many spots to move it back. When it's regular numbers, the exponent tells me how many zeros to add. Remember, you can rewatch that if you need to. I know this was a difficult part we had kind of forgotten. That goes along with numbers five and six down here because they are also powers of 10. We just need to solve them. They're already written out for us. So starting with number five here, I have 47 times 10 to the power of one. Notice this is not a decimal. So remember, regular numbers, I'm going to look at my exponent and that's how many zeros I'm going to add. So 47, my exponent's a one, so add one zero. Looking back here, 47 times 10 to the power of two. So 47, and I'm going to add two zeros and figure out where my comma needs to go. Don't forget those commas. And back here, 47 times 10 to the power of three. So 47, I need to add three zeros and get my comma. So regular number, that exponent tells me how many zeros to add. Number six is also a regular number, 379. So I'm gonna pay close attention to those exponents again. It's a one, so 379 with one zero, get my comma. This exponent is a two, so 379 with two zeros, get my comma. And this exponent is a three, so 379 with three zeros and put my comma. So regular numbers, my power of 10 tells me how many zeros I need to add. I'm gonna flip over to the back side. Numbers seven and eight are still those powers of 10, but you hopefully notice that these numbers are decimals. So remember, with a decimal, that power of 10 tells me how many spots to move my decimal. So we have 0 0.5 times 10 to the power of one. So one, I'm gonna move my decimal one spot, and I'm gonna write down my answer with my new number. So 5.0. Notice, I just left this zero off the front because I don't really need it. All right, next one, I notice my power of 10 is a two, so I need to move my decimal two spots. One, two. Remember, if we have empty loops, we fill them in with zeros. I'm gonna cross out that zero up front. So that looks like 50.0. Zero. And finally, I have a power of three, so I need to move my decimal three spots. One, two, three. Fill in my empty loops with zeros. Cross out that zero up front. 500.0. All right, number eight, we have 9.9. .9. So again, it's a decimal, which means that power of 10 is going to tell me how far to move my decimal. So here it's a one, so I'm gonna move it back one spot, which would look like 99.0. Here it's a two, so I need to move it back two spots. Ooh, I have an empty loop, so fill it in with a zero, 990.0. And finally, I need to move it back three spots. One, two, three, I have two empty loops. If I fill those in with zeros, I get 9,900. Point zero. Okay. 
if it's a decimal, my power of 10 tells me how many spots to move my decimal back. Going on to the next section, it says multiply, show your work. We can use some zeros tricks here. You'll notice there's lots of zeros. That's what they're wanting us to do. So on this first one, it's just regular numbers. Cover up those zeros. 2 times 7 is 14. And how many zeros do I need to add back on? 1, 2, 3. And get my comma. This next one is regular numbers as well. 39 times 100, cover up those zeros. 39 times 1 is 39. And two zeros. And put my comma. Now this next one is a decimal, so I need to stack it up, but I'm still going to use those zeros things that we talked about. So 0 0.09 times 10. Remember, zeros in the front. I can cover up. Now I just have 9 times 10. Well, that would be easy. 9 times 10 is 90. This one had decimals, so I need to count. There were two numbers behind that decimal. So I need two numbers behind, put my decimal, add a 0. 0 0.90. Several of you got confused on that one because you did not stack it up. If it's a decimal, you need to stack it up to make sure that we're looking at it correctly. All right, this next one is also a decimal. 8.5. 3 times 100. I remember if those O's come at the back, we can X them and just do X's and O's. So I made two X's. I need to make two O's. And then I go with my one. One times three is three. One times eight is eight. And I count behind my decimal to make sure I get it in the right spot. There was just one number back here. So it would go right there. 830.8. Zero. Make sure that you stack them up if they are decimals, please. All right, the next one says estimate rounding to the nearest whole number. We've got to pay attention to where it says to round to. Whole number is what it's telling me here. So looking here, I have 8.73. So underline the dollars. Look behind. Is that going to stay an 8 or turn to a 9? That's going to turn to a 9. Then my next number, underline the dollars, 3.29. Look behind, that's going to say a three. And then I just have nine times three, which is 27. On to number 14, same thing, rounding to the whole number, 2.124. Underline the dollars, look behind, that's gonna say a two. 6.501, underline the dollars, look behind, that's gonna become a seven, and that would be a 14. Okay, be careful on your multiplication facts. Make sure you're using your chart if you need to. And down here at the very bottom, it just says multiply and show your work. The thing that you have to be super careful about is watching for your decimals. If it has a decimal in the problem, your answer has to have a decimal. If it doesn't have a decimal in the problem, your answer doesn't need a decimal. Now, I'm going to work through these pretty quick because we should know how to multiply. Remember, you can pause, work it out, and then see if you get the same thing as me or practice on the whole class test review to make sure that you've got your multiplication skills down. If you missed any of these yesterday, you really need to be careful on your test because that means that you're making silly mistakes. All right, number 15, 86 times 19, start with my nine. Nine times six is 54, put my four, carry my five. Nine times eight is 72, plus five more would be 77. I'm done with him, X him out. When I make an X, I have to make an O. Now I'm with the one. One times six is six. One times eight is eight. Add them up. Be careful with my addition as well. One, six, three, four. There is no decimal, so I'll put a comma. And that is my answer for number 15. Moving on to 16. 94 times 57. Start with my seven. Seven times four is 28. Put my eight, carry my two. 7 times 9 is 63, plus 2 would be 65. I'm done with my 7, X's and O's. Now I'm with my 5. 5 times 4 is 20, put my 0, carry my 2. 5 times 9 is 45, plus 2 would be 47. Add them up. 8, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I'm looking back up there, there is no decimal, so I'll put a comma and circle my answer. Going on to number 17, 4.9 times 6. 
So six times nine is 54, put my four, carry my five. Six times four is 24, plus five more would be 29. Looking back up there, this one does have a decimal, and there's only one number behind it because this one doesn't have a decimal, just this one. So one number, my decimal needs to go right there. Alrighty, number 18, we're on the last three here. 7.1 times 3.9, start with my nine. Nine times one is nine. Nine times seven is 63. I'm done with my nine, X him out, make an O. Now I'm with the three. Three times one is three. Three times seven is 21. Add them up. I'm looking back up there. This one does have decimals actually in both numbers. So there's one here and one here. So one, two numbers behind. So two numbers behind. Number 19, I have some zeros up front. Remember, we can scribble those out. Ooh, that just leaves me with six times nine. That's pretty easy. Six times nine is 54. This one did have decimals, so I'm gonna count those up. One, two. I need to go right there and I'd have to add a zero up front. And finally, number 20, 1.7 times 0 0.4. Scribble out that zero up front. Four times seven is 28. Put my eight, carry my two. Four times one is four, plus two more is six. Counting up my decimals because I know there were some in there. I have one, two, so one, two, decimal, add a zero. That is it for your review from yesterday. I am going to also post the whole class test review and I will post its answer key so that you know which ones you get correct or incorrect. So work through it first, then look at the whole class test review and see how you did. If you missed some, make sure that you rework those to ensure that you're prepared for your test whenever you return. Good luck, make sure you study hard, ready for your test. Talk to you later, bye.